This video defines a suggested range and reasons for setting MIG shielding gas flow rates. We receive questions confusing flow and pressure, so we'll first review the difference. We'll also review the relationship between gas volume versus pressure, as this is a factor in gas flow and waste. Unlike oxy fuel, where regulators are set with proper pressure, in MIG welding, flow rate is set, not pressure. MIG uses far less gas, typically only 30 cubic feet per hour or a half a cubic feet in a minute. The pressure at the wire feeder or welder needed to provide that low gas flow is usually only 3 to 7 psi depending on restrictions. Defining pressure versus flow using a water analogy, the pressure in a typical house water pipeline is 40 psi. That pressure exists in the pipe whether water is flowing at a low rate or not. If the faucet valve is opened and allowed to fill a nine and a half inch square box in a minute, it's flowing half a cubic foot per minute, the typical volume flow rate for MIG welding. One reason some confuse flow with pressure is a common flow control used on cylinder gas supply is a regulator flow gauge. It employs a principle called choke flow, which sets gas flow by adjusting pressure upstream of a very small, usually 0.02 to 0.03 inch diameter, orifice. Note the output gauge is labeled CFH, or cubic feet per hour, not pressure in PSI. Understanding the relationship between gas pressure and volume will help explain why a high gas surge blasts out of a MIG gun when starting and a way to correct it. The amount of gas contained in a fixed volume is proportional to the pressure. If the absolute pressure doubles, the volume of gas doubles. As a practical implication in MIG welding, consider a large shielding gas cylinder. It has a physical volume of 1.8 cubic feet. The pressure in a full cylinder is normally 2,500 psi. Then the absolute pressure is 2,515 psi. Dividing by 14.7 provides the volume of gas measured at room temperature and pressure, or 310 cubic feet. In a shielding gas delivery hose, when welding stops, the pressure may rise to 80 psi or 95 psi absolute. The gas hose then stores six and a half times the physical hose volume of gas due to this pressure volume relationship. We have also found a typical hose expands about 13 percent, which makes the stored gas volume 7.3 times the static hose volume. Two published articles help define the maximum usable shielding gas flow rate to avoid turbulence. Turbulent flow causes air to be pulled into the shielding gas stream creating excess spatter and internal well porosity. In fact, the first MIG patent mentioned the need to have smooth lamellar flow in four of its claims. The Welding Institute in Cambridge, England published information shown graphically here. It defines the flow rates that create smooth lamellar flow exiting the nozzle versus those that cause turbulence. For the common nozzle size of 5 8 inches, the maximum flow is 48 CFH. For a half inch ID nozzle, the maximum flow rate is only 37 CFH. A recent article published by the manager of welding R&D for Proxair stated, Using flows over 50 CFH creates gas turbulence and poor weld quality. Why would anyone use an excessively high flow rate? Unfortunately, most MIG welders use far more than that at weld starts. The high pressure in the gas delivery hose created when welding stops stores up to seven times the volume of gas. When welding starts, most of that excess gas blasts out of the nozzle at a very high flow rate. This graph shows an example from a production operation. The peak flow was measured at 225 cubic feet per hour, and it was over 100 cubic feet per hour for about three seconds. When gas turbulence starts, it takes time for it to stabilize to a smooth lamellar flow, even after the flow rate is reduced. 
The curve in violet is from the same welding operation using our gas saver system. Note it has 80% less wasted gas and limits the peak flow rate. More about that device later. We've established the maximum flows that should be used. What are the minimum rates? The minimum flow rate needed to produce quality shielding depends on a number of factors. These include the joint design, MIG gun design and nozzle size, welding parameters, and the draft conditions. For example, in fillet welding, the plates help retain the shielding gas, where when butt welding, the gas is not contained, so a higher flow is required. Drafts affect the quality of gas shielding. Above about 4 miles an hour, a windbreak is needed. Many welders think they can just increase the gas flow. However, tests made using 65 cubic feet per hour flow to see if more wind could be tolerated than when using 45 CFH showed more, not less, internal porosity. Beyond about 50 CFH, extra flow is counterproductive. Air is just pulled into the gas stream due to the shielding gas flow turbulence. A windbreak can be as simple as positioning your body or using a small portable windscreen. Considering the many parameters that affect quality shielding, this table provides the range of shielding gas flow that should be considered when MIG welding. An additional factor is also important. If adequate extra gas is provided when welding starts at a maximum flow rate that prevents excess turbulence, a lower steady state flow rate can be used. Our gas saver system provides this extra start gas at a controlled peak flow limited rate. It may allow the use of lower steady state flow rates. Unfortunately, many folks believe if some gas is good, more must be better when it comes to setting MIG gas flow. They are mistaken. What is a gas saver system? This patented device is a small ID gas hose that replaces the existing gas delivery hose from gas supply to wire feeder or welder. When welding stops, it holds 80% less gas than a conventional gas hose. It incorporates an orifice to limit peak flow rate at the weld start. It provides sufficient gas to quickly purge the weld start area, providing better weld start quality. It retains system pressure so it can automatically maintain the preset flow even when restrictions occur, such as spatter buildup. It is inexpensive, has no moving parts to maintain or adjust. Thousands are in use. For more information about our patented shielding gas saving products and training information, visit us at netwelding.com. That's www.netwelding.com. Thank you.